Hello everyone and welcome. We're here in Yeshivat Chut Shel Chesed under the guidance of Rabbi Shalom Arush. And today we continue learning, discussing the stories of Rabbi Nachman of Breslov. It's called Sipure Maasiyot. We're holding today a brand new start, second story, titled The King and the Emperor. Once there was a great emperor who did not have any children. There was also a king who did not have any children. An emperor is someone on a higher status. He only converses with the other kings. A king, he, he goes down to the people. So you have the emperor on the higher level and the king on the lower level. The emperor traveled all over the world trying to find the remedy and way to have children. The king also traveled around the world for the same reason. They were all trying to have children. Children can also mean ideas, can mean new ideas in our service of Hashem. When we travel the world, when we go on a trip, Hashem makes us meet certain people at specific times, at specific places, all to give us hints to get closer to Him. When we find someone that we didn't see in a while and we start talking to them, how's it going? A lot of times you end up with some a new insight on life, a new insight on how to serve God. And that is... Also, the idea of bearing children, bearing a new idea in Torah thought. But you see here that the emperor and the king, they had to lower themselves to go and try to have children. That is, to keep the world going, to do for one another. And that sometimes a person says, hey, I'm not going to lower myself, I'm going to stay where I am. No, sometimes we have to lower ourselves, so to speak, to leave our comfort zone. The emperor and the king had to leave their palaces. Leave your comfort zone sometimes. You have to leave your comfort zone to go and help others. And this is something that Rabbi Arash is speaking about recently, which is the idea of having love for a fellow Jew with self-sacrifice through prayer, through implementing acts of kindness, even though it's hard for us, but especially to have prayer because that could reach everywhere. So they went to try to have children Now, the two of them happened to come to the same inn. They did not know anything about each other, but the emperor recognized a certain royal bearing in the king. He inquired, and he admitted that he was a king. The king said, you also have some sort of uh, royal manner to you. And he said, yes, I am a emperor. The two of them told each other that they were traveling around the world to find a way to have children. And they decided among themselves right there in that inn. They said, if we will have children, one a boy and one a girl, they will get married. And they decided on this pact there at the inn. The emperor returned home and he had a daughter. The king also returned home and he had a son. See, there was something to this. There had to be some sort of a connection between these, the king and the emperor, because the destiny for their children to get married was, is hopefully going to be the, the process of the story, how they're finally going to be able to get married. There are going to be hardships along the way. There's going to be issues along the way and roadblocks. But at the end of the day, Hashem made that these two people met, like we spoke about in the beginning. Hashem makes us meet certain people at certain times. And doesn't seem like they did anything. They didn't find the remedy. To, they didn't do any treatments. Just by the fact that they met, they brought about a, a salvation to one another. So, the emperor sent his daughter away to study. And the king also sent his son to study. And it happened to turn out that what happened now? That the lives of these two children cross, cross paths. That they went to the same teacher. And they fell in love with one another. And they pledged that they would marry each other. They didn't know anything about what their parents had this certain pact for them. But this is something that they felt. This is the idea of the soul, a soulmate. This story can be on a simple level. A person looking for their soulmate. It could also mean a person's looking to connect to Hashem. A person's trying to connect to the Torah itself. Now, the king's son took out a ring and he placed it on her hand 
And that was a symbol that they wanted to get married. Of course, they had to get consent from their parents and everything. But the the couple was ready to go. The bride and the groom, they wanted to marry each other. Now, the end of the year and the end of the, 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 the studying uh, finished. And the emperor sent for his daughter. He brought her home. The king also sent for his son and brought him home. People started proposing matches for the emperor's daughter. But she did not want anyone. She didn't tell anyone the reason. But she had a reason. She wanted to marry the son of the king. The king's son also missed her very much. And the emperor's daughter fell to depression. We said before that the king's son took a ring. When we get married, we also get married with a ring. A ring represents emuna, represents faith. So one of the major things in a marriage is to have trust. Can't always be breathing down the other one's back. We have to give space to one another and realize that there's a certain amount of trust that I have to have for you and you have to have for me. And there's another aspect of trust in a marriage is that the husband's job is to to strengthen the wife. Even when times are hard, it's his job to strengthen her. Don't don't say, oh, I let's say, for example, it's hard time with their uh, financial situation and she wants something. You don't say, I don't have it right now. That's not something you do. You have to strengthen her with faith. You say, yes, of course I want to buy it for you. And of course I want you to have everything. And let's let's try to pray together that we get to a better state. And as soon as we can, we're going to do it. Don't just say, no, I can't do it. So that's the idea of a husband having to give him his wife strength. And same thing like we said if this represents us and God, we want to have a relationship with Hashem. We want to have a relationship with spirituality, with the Torah. Hashem also, He gives us faith. What does that mean? If we open our eyes to see the divine providence and everything that happens in our life, that boosts our faith in Hashem. That boosts our desire to believe and cling and and not leave our prayers and realize that Hashem has everything for us and He could do anything for us. And even when things are hard, we see the, 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 the silver lining, the beautiful things that Hashem is doing for us, even among the hardships, that strengthens our emunah in Hashem. And that, that, that makes the bond between us and Hashem even stronger. So however you want to interpret the story, there's no specific way to interpret it. We could just listen to it on a, on a regular, just the words themselves. Some people, they just like to listen to the words themselves. Go for it. If you want to try to get a lesson out of it, we're trying to get a lesson for out when a person looking for their soulmate, when you're married even already, or when a person is looking for a connection with his creator. The emperor brought his daughter to his estates, and palaces to make her aware of her high status, but she was still depressed. The emperor tried showing his daughter, why are you so depressed? Look at the palaces you have, look at the wealth, look at all the money, and you're so on such a high stat status because she lacked her soulmate, because she lacked a connection with Hashem, because she lacked a connection to spirituality, all the money, wealth, palaces will still leave you with an empty state. What did she need? She needed her husband. She needed her soulmate to strengthen her with emuna. So we'll stop here for today in the story. But let's try to recap. We have the king and the emperor. They both had children after a while. And now... They're saying that they don't want to marry anyone else and they're not really saying the reason and she's falling to depression. So we want to ask Hashem to help us, save us from depression and the only way to battle that is with faith. If we're not holding there, we have to start asking Hashem, please Hashem, help me to have faith. Help me to have a, a good relationship with somebody that could strengthen me and give me strength and to give me the faith that I need. So Hashem should help us that these stories should give us an awakening to our soul. That's one of the the, uh, the ideas behind Rabbi Nachman's stories. But besides that, may Hashem help us to get the practical advice out of these stories and to implement them in our life 
Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the continuation of the story of the king and the emperor. Thank you again.